Hello again and welcome. This is just going to be a very short video where we talk again about torque wrenches. A viewer by the name of Pete V posted the question, will most beginners have a torque wrench? LOL. So he's referring to the cost of these torque wrenches. I have a breakover wrench that cost, I don't know, maybe $50. This click type costs over $200. So I was thinking about cheaper torque wrenches and I talked to my buddy Flipper who has a 3D printer and we printed some torque wrenches that are available online for free. So I'll post the link to these in the description if you want to try to print your own. So there's a few different types. This is probably the simplest. This is basically just a wrench with a hole in it. You could actually just take a standard wrench and make your own. But the idea is that you would use a fish scale attached to the end of this. So the length from the center to this is some known amount. It looks like probably an inch and a half. So very simple, but it does require a fish scale. You can get fish scales fairly cheap if you just want an analog one. Certainly under $10. I think digital ones now are even under $10. Another way to do it is using a bean type wrench. The thickness of this area right here determines the range of the wrench. This particular one with the plastic that he had used gives us three inch pounds when the beam deflects roughly this amount. So what I have here is our test jig. All right, hopefully this will show up on camera. Try to get a little bit closer view. So you can see the needle moving up. You can see right there the metal is now in the air. So again if I were to move this closer so this would be two inch pounds and now you can see the needle deflects even less. So to get a wrench like this to work you'd have to play around with the thickness of this area a little bit depending on the plastics that you're using. Instead of the jig that I'm using here one of them actually came with this little handy measuring tool. Again you would put your weight over here and this is some known length. You can see how these just fit together and again with our known calibrated weight we would just mark the deflection of the beam for the torque that we're trying to measure. So this is the last wrench. This is a breakover type. Now we've made a couple of different revisions of this. The very first one that we tried we basically followed what the author's recommendations were and they had printed the handle circular this direction. Of course, when you go to the author's blog for this, they're going to show this really wimpy spring. I don't know what torque settings I could actually achieve with it. Maybe, I don't know, a half an inch pound or something. But I was actually trying to hit four inch pounds with this. So what ended up happening, it broke right at this point here. You can see I've glued it back together. And it was such force, of course, the spring came flying out. All the parts went shooting across the lab. So Flipper changed the direction to print lengthwise. Of course, this gives it a lot more strength. So I'd recommend if you're going to make one of these, print it lengthwise. So there's a few different parts. So here we have the plunger. This fits in the end like so. Again, all these parts need to be massaged a little bit, but you want this pretty loose. You don't want any kind of a drag or a bind because that'll affect the torque setting. And we have the wrench. This fits down inside like so. And in my case, I'm using a little steel nail. Of course, I've painted these just to give them a little bit different look. Now, to reach the torque settings that we were looking for, required some pretty big springs. I didn't happen to have anything that was strong enough to actually hit the four inch pound. So what I have here are two separate springs. One floats inside the other like this. These just drop down in the end. And then there's a bolt. Again, this is all printed in plastic. So to add more torque, we just twist this in. What we're going to do then is put this onto our test jig, and then we can go ahead and calibrate it. So one thing when you're using a breakover wrench like this, what you don't want to do is pull it all the way over like so. You're really just looking for this thing to just start to deflect. This is 2 inch pounds. And you can see it can't even begin to lift that weight. So let's go ahead and we'll adjust this thing in a little bit. Right there you can see we're now able to lift up 2 inch pounds. Let's move this out a little further. Not quite 3. I'll give it another small twist. 
right there so there's three inch pounds let's go out a little further so this is four inch pounds here and again we'll have to adjust this in a little further right about there you can see it's just starting to lift it up right when it breaks over so that'd be pretty close to four inch pounds so Flipper said the material cost to print these, it's in the pennies. So if you have somebody that has a 3D printer, this would be a very cheap way to get a torque wrench. Uh, again, we had printed up a few different ones of these. I was cycling these things by hand. I was trying to get an idea how the torque setting was going to change over time. And what I found is that sharp edge will actually wear fairly quickly. I would say if your use case is fairly low, I'm talking maybe 50 cycles or so, you could probably just print this and use it the way it is or maybe you can find some better plastic. In my case, what I wanted to do was try adding a metal band. So here's the plunger. And you can see I've just taken this small strap of steel and I've bent that around and then I've glued that into place. And then you'll see here there's a copper strap that I've also epoxied into place. So after making those changes, I continued to cycle this wrench, and this one stayed in calibration after even 100 cycles. The other thing, too, that I want to mention is that I grease these joints, even on this one here. So there's a small amount of silicone grease in all these joints to help with the wear. So if you're working with one of these low-cost VNAs and you can't afford a good torque wrench, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use something like these cheap ones here that we've just printed out. Again, very low cost. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video and hopefully the end of my torque wrench video. So hopefully everyone out there is staying safe. Hope to see you on the next video where we're going to be looking at the Bryman BM789. Later.